It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Brad Smiley, the head football coach for the Southern Arkansas University, and the Mule Riders are headed to the Live United Bowl for a third time in program history. They'll be taking on Missouri Western on Saturday. And Coach, let me just start right there. Congratulations on another season that will end in the postseason as you all take it to uh, beyond the regular season now, 9-2 and two on the year. And let's just start right there. Congratulations. Well, I appreciate it, Joey, man. Our guys are, we, you know, we've just been blessed to have fantastic kids in this program. Uh, man, they, they, they completely bought in to be a new staff, new head coach, new staff last year. Um, you know, just the fact to be here in year two, it's just a testament to the buy-in from the players in the program, our older guys. You know, we only had five seniors last year. We only have four seniors this year. So, you know, the opportunity to be in postseason play, it's really for – it's an extra spring ball. That's the way I've always looked at it. You know, this is year 13 as a hit football coach. This is my sixth bowl game. So, you know, it's it's very fortunate to be in a situation where we get three extra weeks of practice with our young guys and scrimmages with the guys who don't play as much, the guys we need to develop. Plus, we get three extra weeks to get some guys healthy again. It's probably as healthy as we've been since probably week four, and week five. So, uh, you know, just it's a tremendous opportunity for all of us within this program. And, and it's really just a springboard moving forward because, you know, you look at what it takes to win the conference. We're knocking on the door at nine and two, uh, you know, us and, and, and Henderson and Wachita all beat each other. We all lost to a very good Harding team who's, you know, a, a week away from maybe playing for everything. So. Uh, it's a chance to battle the MIAA. You know, regionally, we, we bump into this league so much um, and we hear about them so much. And then you look at, you know, last year, you know, Northwest beat knocking Washita out, and, you know, early, you know, in the first round. And then Central Missouri, you know, getting Henderson this year and then Harding getting a chance to knock out Central Missouri. So now we get a chance to play Missouri Western from that league and, and a very good football team. So it's going to be a great game, and but it, it's all positive for us. There's nothing negative about this opportunity. Uh, it's all positive things for our players, for our coaching staff, and for our program. Coach, you mentioned getting to be right up there at the top of the conference and, and knocking on that door for, for a title. It's been a solid season. I mean, it's a, it's a undefeated at home, something to hang your hat on there. And, and, of course, with the postseason, both of those things combined have to be good for recruiting. And you get another win over a ranked Henderson State team, second year in the row on that for that. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, that's, you know, for us in our home and, and, and hopefully being an hour away from Texarkana, it's going to be a huge boost for us because our home crowd is unlike any other in this, uh, in this conference, for sure. The GAC, there's not another home atmosphere that's even close. All the, you know, we don't tailgate here, they mule gate, and, and they get all the mule gating in and the family. I mean, our, our, our band's going to be at the game. We're going to have a great crowd. I know the mule gating, the Alumni Association, the, the, the mule rider football families, they're all planning on being there early. And so I think we're going to have a great crowd. You know, having the band, the largest band in the state of Arkansas, get after it out there. They make a huge difference because, you know, it's they know the game. They get into the games. They're loud. So hopefully we can draw a lot of energy because, you know, that is what happens in our home games. I mean, you know, coaches from opponents after the game, that's typically one of the first things. Hey, great game, coach. And, man, this is this is awesome. You know, and uh, it's just an electric atmosphere. So hopefully we can get du duplicate that on Saturday for us. And. And, and propel us to victory. But, uh, you know, that's the thing. It's It's been a great year. It's been a great run. Uh, but nine and two, like I said, we were in the discussion. Um, but it's important for us for the last six weeks of the season, you know, the nation of D2 football is talking about Southern Arkansas. Well, you know, you know, being ranked or, or receiving votes. And the next thing you know, you're ranked in the super region. And, and of course, a couple coaches in the league hit me up, you know, in that first Super region rankings come out. I'm like, man, coach, year two, you guys are already ranked in the top ten of the super region. That's awesome. Congrats on a great year so far. And so, but we want to compete. You know, not only compete for championships, but win it. And you know, we're knocking on the door this year. And you know, this extra time, this extra prep, everything we're getting, and these opportunities is just give us an opportunity to maybe go kick the door in next year. Coach, let's let's talk about that team then right now and start to get a look at what we may see on Saturday. You have a couple of, of backs that are near that thousand yard rushing mark. Well, Tariq Scales ob obviously is past that mark, but your quarterback and OB Jones right at it, nine hundred sixty six yards on the season, and you expect him to cross that thousand yard 
plateau as well come Saturday. Talk about your offense and what we may see. Well, I mean, honestly, yeah, our run game makes us go. I mean, we're one of, uh, I think we're third or fourth in the nation in rushing offense. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we play in a league with Harding, who all they do is run the ball. So, But we'll still throw the football in Southern Naz. All they do is run the ball So, with their quarterback. But for us, it just shows the type of weapons that we have here. You know, Jarek, this is three consecutive seasons. He's the only mule rider in school history to have three 1,000-yard rushing seasons. You know, last year when he hit a thousand, he became one of only two. Now he's the only one ever. Um, you know, he's such a talent and, and he's such an awesome kid and, and unbelievable. I mean, his football knowledge, his football IQ is through the roof. But, you know, there's a guy also we roll in that comes in behind him with Caden Roach. And, and they spend a lot of time in that backfield together. Caden Roach is, I think, close to about 700 yards rushing, seven touchdowns on the year. And then, of course, our quarterback. And, and a lot of that is not necessarily quarterback design run because, you know, we're a spread tempo team. We RPO people. And but when he pulls it down, it takes off with it. You got to know, you know, and, and uh, had a, had a one coach, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you know, hit me up as just say, hey, I thought your quarterback, I thought OB was the most dangerous, you know, weapon in this league this year because, you know, you can sit there and drop seven in the coverage game and and now he can take off on you. You know, if you're yeah. going to play too high and you're going to key on Jared Scales and Caden Roach and that running game, uh, he's liable to pull it on you and house it, you know. And so it just it just makes us that much more dangerous that he can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his feet. Um, they have to know where he is at all times. And, you know, I, I think that's probably a lot of the success that he had this year was because early on, he was on scales. The key was on Roach and our running backs. And so he was able to pull and make plays where last year, you know, he's the first quarterback in school history to throw for 2,000. He had 700 rushing, had a fantastic year. Where this year, they're keying on our running backs. He's pulling them. He's breaking 50, 60 yard touchdowns on people. So, you know, people, I think scales and Roach in our running back room kind of benefited from the year that OB's had because. Next thing you know, they have to start staying at home and playing OB in the run game, and then that opens it back up. So it's just, uh, you know, blessed to have depth, blessed to have weapons, and uh, to be great kids who, who absolutely get it. That's just what makes us that much more dangerous. But, you know, our offensive line's really good as well. Colton Greer, our left tackle, first-team all-conference performer. Um, you know, he should be an all-region guy, maybe all-American. I don't know. He needs to be. Um, he's really talented, but you know, last year we we started three sophomores. So those guys this year, Colton, our, our left guard Thomas Bowman, our right guard Kate Baker, are juniors, um, and we start a couple pups, a couple freshmen. So you know, there's no hiding them anymore. Everybody knows our right tackle is a true freshman, and he actually made our all conference team. So he's a tremendous talent, Connor Haggerty, and just cannot wait to see the development of him throughout his career here. So Zach Thompson at center. Had a fantastic year for us. But those guys, you know, with our tight end room and our tight ends and running backs, I mean, they tie in a lot in the run game together. So uh, that's kind of what makes us go, man. The, the perimeter blocking by the receivers, tight end, running back room, the interior blocking by the offensive line, and having weapons that can they can take it the distance any time. Uh, you know, that's what makes us, I think, very special and why the reason why a couple of years in a row now we finished – you know, top of the league in scoring offense, total offense. We're top five, top ten in the nation in those categories, rushing offense. So it makes for a lot of fun, that's for sure. The offense doing its job, but the defense doing its job as well. And, and it's strong. You have Melvin Smith Jr., Zay Woods, that are taking care of business in your secondary. That's just a, a place for you to start, Coach, because I know that the defense as a whole is, just as I mentioned, strong. Yeah, no doubt. I, you know, in year two, you just see a lot of a, a better understanding of what Coach Reed's looking for, you know, when it comes to our defense and how we play the game. So, you know, year two, obviously, to bring so many guys back from last year, uh, you know, we had three seniors on defense last year. All three were defensive ends, and that was it. And they moved on. So, really, you're in year two of the guys who have that understanding. And, you know, I've been one in my whole coaching career. I had an old buddy a long time ago talk about when you build a defense, you start a defensive end and corner. And, uh, you know, Mel Smith and Zay Woods are two of the top corners in this league. Uh, you know, I kind of thought Zay obviously got overlooked in some of the all-conference stuff. Mel was a first-teamer. He leads the nation and passes defense and PBUs. 
Um, but our defensive ends, Dawson Scott, Hunter Hewitt, again, you know, Dawson's an all-conference performer, one of the leaders in the conference in, in sacks, tackles for loss. But those two guys on the edge, the guys we bring in behind them, uh, can get after the quarterback as well. You know, Zach Burnett, I mean, those guys are playing really, really, really well. And so our interior guys, Elvin Calhoun, he wears number eight. You know, we have a special, we have a tradition that we started here last year when I came in as head coach. Nobody had ever won zero before. They didn't have a zero. So we added a zero. That guy's voted on. He's our ultimate teammate. He gets voted on at the end of spring by the whole team. That's Cole Williams, uh, our one of our slot receivers. And he plays inside and outside. But uh, this year we added to it with 870 being our area code. Number eight and number seven were also voted on by the team. So the leading vote getter on defense was Elvin Calhoun, our starting three technique. He plays nose. Uh, you know, statistically, those inside guys don't get the tremendous stats, but those ends get a lot of sacks because he's in there pushing that pocket and doing a great job. And so Elvin, you know, being one of those guys, we hang our hat on. Of course, seven is Matt Whitten, our, our tight end and leading receiver. But, you know, I think that – you know, on the defensive side of the ball, again, I'm still looking forward to the growth that's going to be in years to come because that whole secondary, I mean, really we have one senior on the defensive side of the ball this year, and that's our Mike linebacker, Jacob Berry, and he makes us go, no question about it, but everybody else around him should be back um, because, again, he's that lone senior on that side of the ball. So, um, you know, those guys have had – they showed so much, um, you know, improvement from last year to this year. It's, you know – Honestly, while we're nine and two, I mean, our defense really done a tremendous job. And, you know, we had we had a couple of bad ball games that we did not play great defense. We didn't tackle well, got caught out of position that honestly, that was Harding and Washita, you know, and you throw those two games out. We're probably top two to top three in every category statistically on defense. But, you know, if I don't hit those two balls out of bounds, I shoot under par. But you know, so you got to <laughs> unfortunately, you got to count those two. That's uh, I love that, Coach. That's a great analogy, and it's very much the case too. I I won't even tell you about uh, where I'm shooting with those balls out of bounds here, here, there, and and all over. Uh, let me ask you really quickly then, as as we wrap up our time together, it's the first opportunity for to you to get a chance to to see Missouri Western as as the head coach there at Southern Arkansas. It's a rematch of the 2018 Live United Bowl. Both these teams are playing now in their third. Live United Bowl, respectively. Give us a little preview of what you expect to see on Saturday. Well, you know, Coach Fenwick's got a fantastic football team. Man. Those guys play really, really well. I think if you look at, and, and, if, and I have, I've pulled them, our stats and where we rank in the uh, GAC compared to where they rank in the MIAA, it's almost identical. I mean, you know, we're, we're all one, two, and, you know, and or three in certain categories, and then, you know, the passing offense, passing defense is where we both slide down. But when you play really good defense, you're ahead. So people throw the ball on you. You know, and we've both had, you know, games where we've blown people out and, and they've come in out there and they're throwing the ball around on your backups. But uh, Coach Fenwick, they've, they've got a fantastic football team. I think they're loaded uh, with guys that play the game the right way. Uh, he obviously, uh, he and his staff obviously take pride in a lot of the things that we do, which is being very physical, being a physical football team and playing the game in a physical way. Uh, they spend a lot of time in their kicking game. Uh, and honestly, that's how I judge other football teams. You know, I, I spend a lot of time on our kicking game. And when I cut on the film, do you see their top players playing in the kicking game? Are they well coached? Do you Are they playing with great technique? And they do that. And then that's how you know they're a well-coached football team. And no question about it. It's going to be fun. It should be a great ball game. I'm looking forward to it. Our kids are looking forward to it. They, they've had a fantastic attitude. I mean, we're we're looking forward to participating in the all the bowl events, the the community service. You know, part of our mission. You know, here at, in in our Mule Rider mission, it's you know graduate, win a championship, and make a positive impact. And this is going to give us an opportunity to make a positive impact in another community other than Magnolia, Arkansas. So to be able to box meals for the needy and to go out and spend time, you know, in schools and boys and girls clubs tomorrow, we're looking forward to that as a team, no question, and as a program. All right, Coach Brad Smiley, whose mule riders are headed south, not too far, but uh, south to Texarkana 
and they'll be playing in the Live United Bowl, taking on Missouri Western on Saturday. It's a noon kickoff time. You'll be able to watch it on the GAC Sports Network, also on YouTube, GAC Athletics. Coach Smiley, thank you for taking time with us today here on the Summit. Yo, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. 